what is um, Unhurried Pathways? Well, we just held a conference with that title um, about children between the ages of naught and five or six or seven, depending when you think children ought to start school. Um, and it's also the title of a document which has been uh, produced to go alongside the government's statutory requirements, the Early Years Foundation Stage, EYFS, a document called Unhurried Pathways, to go alongside that, which is attempting to give another way of looking at childhood beside the sort of um, data-driven audit culture, schoolified version that I'm afraid the government tends to come up with. One of the major sort of premises of the whole idea of an unhurried childhood is that there is time to play. Um, and that time to play would involve hopefully outdoor play at all ages from as, as you know, during the, the, the early years you'd obviously probably be supervised by your mum or somebody else's mum. But as time goes on, children having the time to be children and play the way actually lucky children have played since time immemorial in every culture, in every country. It was just something children went out and did without us messing them about. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and a very important part of children's development. The reason that the, the, the behavioural problems are happening and so many more behavioural problems are happening is that children have not had a proper childhood. They have not been able to play and develop socially, emotionally, physically as they should. Therefore, they have problems with getting along with other kids. Um, actually, what they need is more opportunities in, you know, in, in a, an appropriate environment with sufficient help on hand to, to play, to, to reach those developmental goals, but in fact what we do is re we reduce them. I mean, sport has been traditionally a way we, in which lads particularly, who needed a bit more direction, um, have, have found a way of playing with the other boys, getting on with it, and becoming socialised if yeah. things had gone wrong before. But um, that's not going to happen if it if it's not play, if it turns into coaching and, and training and, and so on, it's more likely to increase the social emotional problems <laughs> there in the first place. Children are born to imitate and they'll imitate what they see. So if the football they see is highly competitive, highly aggressive, um, and basically it's just about winning at all costs. That, unfortunately, is what they'll try to do as well. Um, they are little imitators. So I think that children who are given the impression that, that um, you know, playground football, park-type football, is the same thing as Premier League, um, or, or being treated as, as though they might one day be a Premier League player, they're obviously going to have problems because they'll start behaving in the way that they think they're expected to behave, which is nothing to do with football. It's to do with a sort of macho-ness that, quite frankly, they just haven't got the testosterone to, <laughs> to fuel. They're just imitating um, boys behaving badly. Right. Um, so then you'll get problems in the playground with football and people will start saying ban football. But in fact, you know, playing grown-up games at their own level, with their own rules, with only needing adult intervention if, you know, they need a bit of direction or help, that then that actually is how children learn to get along with each other. Yeah. So, and particularly boys seem to enjoy playing in, in team games. They find, you know, find their place in that particular little group. Um, so it, it's quite tragic. You end up with these, these ridiculous, vicious circles beginning because we're either expecting children to behave like adults, um, treating them like adults, or putting down our own wishes onto them instead of letting them do what children do quite successfully for themselves, which is play.